Today on Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, we're talking about releasing energetic clutter. How does your personal space feel most of the time? What are some of the ways you can clear your space? How does not removing your energy affect you? Learn about space and personal clearing as we wrap up our month focusing on interviews. Do you control your clutter or does your clutter control you? Unclear your clutter inside and out. We'll teach you awareness as well as action steps to create change in your life. Come on, let's get started. I'm going to end the month with another episode from the Nothing Left to Give podcast. One of my favorite because we're talking about clearing not only your physical space, but also your energetic space. I don't think I've talked a lot about clearing your personal space. So often we don't think about the energetic component of something. When we moved out of our home, I did kind of a blessing. I thanked the house for everything as we're getting ready to move in our home. The one thing is we didn't have a lot we could take in the car, but I've got my sage to smoke and clear out the energy after it's been clean. And that is to remove other people's energy and there's nothing wrong people are really nice and actually he's leaving one of his paintings which we're super excited about but just to clear that energy and it's part of making our new home ours it's just as important to clear out our aura and personal space you don't have to be an empath to notice if your energy's off or if you're feeling someone else in your space chris mcdonald has now started a new podcast the nothing left to give. There are about 40 episodes and you can find those always put for all these episodes, put links in the show notes. And her new podcast is the Holistic Counseling Podcast and just go to holisticcounselingpodcast.com. Everything's energy. So let's get started. Welcome back to the Nothing Left to Give podcast. This is episode 24 and I'm your host, Chris McDonald. I'm so happy to bring back a past guest who's someone I learned so much from in her past interview on clearing and organize your home office workspace. Her name is Julie Croccio, and she's an award-winning professional organizer, end-of-life organizer, and certified life coach. She hosts the popular self-help podcast, Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, and is author of 10 books, including the Got Clutter 365 Journal Prompt Series. If you haven't heard her past interview in episode 12, I highly recommend it. I listened to it again, and I still learn things because you can't even take it all in on one listen. And remember, this episode is so full of amazing tips, and I know that it's worth your time to listen to. A fun fact about her is she traveled to 49 of 50 states, and Alaska's on her bucket list. She's here today to talk more about space clearing and talk to us about energetic clutter. Welcome back to the show, Julie. Hey, Chris. Thanks for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. I appreciate your patience. So we had a little bit of uh, difficulties connecting <laughs> for the show. <laughs> You're very patient. I appreciate it as I am now podcasting in my new home. So it took a, a few uh, tries, but we did it. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm happy to be the first person Yay! in your new home. You're breaking it in. So my new podcast space. <laughs> and I actually, the, the interesting part is I have my own office now. I, I was in my living room. <laughs> When I started with the pandemic, um, doing telehealth and podcasting, but now I have a actual office. Nice. So I got privacy and keep the cats out so they don't meow too much and it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> and it's great. And you have, and you have all, you can listen, re-listen to episode 12 for the tips to get it in tip top shape. Yeah, that's it too. I was thinking about that when I was listening today. I was like, wow, I got to really think about this for my space as you start, especially when you start fresh with the space, right? I want to start the right way. So before we get started with the interview, can you talk more about your work and anything else you want to share that you have going on? Sure. So I'm really passionate about supporting people and clearing clutter in all areas of their lives. And what makes me a little different than most people who do this for a living is I believe the inside affects the outside. So if you have spiritual clutter, for instance, or mental, emotional clutter, it's going to affect your physical space and vice versa. And to me, my definition of clutter is this. Clutter is anything that prevents you from creating the life you choose, deserve, and desire. And as I've aged and gotten older, 
Another area I've become passionate about is supporting people in end of life organization. Now I'm not an attorney, but I see my role as helping you get all that important paperwork together, having a conversation if you thought about your legacy and what like that would be. And you like me have caps, Chris, and I too often see so many oh, animals yes. being thrown out on the street because no one's done anything about it and they haven't planned for it. So that's something that I help people with. And what gets me excited is when you prepare for death, you can live life fully. And when you clear your clutter, you can share your gifts with the world. And that's the world I'd like to create. We need it now more than ever. Exactly. I like that when you prepare for death, you can live life fully. I had to think about that for a second. Yeah. That's really some words to live by. Most people don't like to talk about it, do they? Or think about it? No, you know, it's interesting. I just was asked to be on a panel and I thought, I probably didn't say it a new thing. It's one of those free webinars and it tells you who got the most votes. And I wasn't at the bottom, but I was definitely below average. And I thought, and she said when she started the interview, she said, probably people don't want to hear or think about it. And I said, yeah, that's true. And I understand that, but we have to, because if we don't, we're going to leave a mess from someone else behind and people need time to grieve when you're gone. They don't need to be thinking, what's my password? What's their password for Facebook? What do they want to do? Do they want their social media account up or do they want it deleted? Then come on, you need to spend time grieving, not on that stuff. Yeah, so true. And I think for those that have a business too, to have some kind of, Mm -hmm. um, uh, and that's what I've created as well, because, you know, you just never know. And I remember I rented office space when I first started out and this Mm -hmm. one person was an academic advisor and she had no plan and they didn't know what to do. And she died all of a sudden quickly. She was young and but yeah, it's always mm-hmm. good to have a contingency plan. A thousand percent. And what about sensitive information? Like you're a therapist. You don't want someone confidential notes you've taken getting into the wrong hands. I mean, those are things that you have to consider. You do, really. And having that access to that is so important. That's a whole other episode. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to come back as long as you I need know. Go. We might have to do that. I was just thinking that that, that would probably be helpful. Because it again, it's it's people, you know, just get stuck in their day to day and where they are. And, you know, it's something to think about for sure. And I think organizing that for your loved ones, like you said, is is really loving, isn't it? It's being loving for them. Mm -hmm. It's a gift. Mm -hmm. It is a gift. It gives them peace of mind. Yeah, for sure. But I remember you mentioned too, you were taking a, a, this is off topic, a plant course. So a plant and herb course. How are you doing with that? I love it. And we're going to bring it in today because it's going to be one of my things I learned. I learned a lot of stuff to share with you. I absolutely love it. The teacher is amazing. And I'm going to retake it after the year because there's so much information. I thought I'm going to do it one year and then retake it because I have so much to learn. I just made it's on uh, this month is on making things. So I made daisy oil. So you take fresh daisies, you do this process. And I've already messed up a couple things. And she's like, it's part of the, because I went ahead and tried to make stuff without waiting for her teaching. So I made daisy oil and I also made a daisy flower essence. Yep. A daisy flower essence. And I'm going to make a sunflower essence as well. And yeah, no, it's been, it's been amazing. And so I'm really excited because I'm going to be sharing some things for space clearance with your audience today. When that I didn't know about, it's going to be another tool that they have if they want to clear space and clear their own energetic clutter. Excellent. I feel like everybody's got to start taking notes today, but we'll we'll leave it in the show notes too. Because <laughs> you had Fantastic. so much stuff, I couldn't even put it all in the show notes. Can you talk first? What is space clearing? Because a lot of people might be scratching their head on what that is. Great question. So I talk about energetic clutter. And everything's energy, whether you believe it from a physics perspective or you believe it from a spiritual perspective. So I'm going to share two examples that might help people understand a little better. Have you ever gotten into an argument with someone or maybe you walked into a room after an argument and that old saying, the tension was so thick you could cut it with a knife? That's energetic clutter. Yes. Most Most of the women listening, I know you're raising your hands when you've met someone, a slimy old guy, and you want to go home and take a shower. Maybe you're (laughs) out at an event. I think politicians have a really energetic high slime factor. And many times when I meet them, I'm like, oh, I need to go have a shower. So that's some of the things. Or you might, if you're super sensitive, 
someone might not be physically close to you, but boy, have they gotten in your energetic space and you're just like, you need to back up. And one thing I had to do this not too long ago, someone started to approach me and I'm like, safe six feet distance. And I put up my hand and, you know, just the act of like palm spread and stop. And they stop because not only is it seeing me do that, but boy, did I have the energy like back up, buddy. Don't even come anywhere in my space. And so that's so those protecting are your, your space, huh? And energy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's the kind of the thing. And you can have energetic clutter in your house and your space. And then also in your aura, also in your energy. And so that's what I want to talk about today, how we can clear that. So you mentioned you had some space clearing exercises. So what are some of those and what can we do? Well, one of the things I want to, I'm going to call it smoking. And people might have heard this term as smudging, but this is one of the things I'm excited about to share from class. Smudging is not a term we want to use. If you use a sage stick because it's not a proper term, it's offensive. And it's so a person who is a Native American who might be doing this on a regular basis, it's my understanding it's not okay to say that. So I've started to call it what I used to call smudge, call that smoking. So you can simply get a bundle of sage. And I I just want to have an extra note here. This is really important and that I love about the classes. You want to make sure if you're buying a resin, which I'll talk about later, or a sage stick, that it's sustainably harvested. Because a lot of these things like white sage is currently threatened. It's the threatened species. And Palo Santo, because Americans got on a kick. I did hear about that. Yeah. And so... It's hard. Someone might say they're reputable and say, oh, I gathered it from fallen trees, but you don't know that. So I'd encourage you to rethink that. So you can get something like Artemisia, which is is like sage, but it looks more grassy and use that as something that you can smoke yourself with and you can smoke the space. And remember when you're going around your home underneath the bed in the corners, because energy can get stuck in the corners, you can do that. And whatever method you choose, but you want to make sure you get every area. And when I'm doing this, I also like, what do I want to release? I want to release all my stress. I want to release my anger at that ding dong from the other day. So think about what you want to release when you're going around your home. You can use sound. I have a brass bowl. I also have a crystal bowl. Sound's a great way to break up energy and disrupt patterns. So you can go around. If you like chanting, chant. Remember, if there's something that feeds your soul and you hear like the monks chanting, play that music to disrupt the sound. You can use blessed water. I love the ocean. You can use water from the ocean. And what I do is I have a big shell and I'll put some water in there and then I'll take a fresh flower and go around the house. And as I'm saying what I want to release from it, you can dip and do that. The other thing that I like to do is to drain the energy. And what I encourage people, have fun with this. Play around with it. What speaks to you? I always like to bring in nature when possible because I just think that that is really great for the indoors and is just really wonderful. But whatever you connect with, if it's like I mentioned the chanting monks, then use that. So I'll visually at the end of the day, especially in, for instance, my office where I spend a lot of time, visualize my, my hands and moving my hands up and down, just draining the energy from the room, right? Oh, that stress from the day. Oh, that cranky person I had to deal with. I'm just going to drain that. I'm going to just send it back down to the earth. And then after I do that, and after I've cleared some, I like to have, what's my intention? What do I want to bring into this space? Well, it's my office. I want to bring abundance because I'd like to make some money to support my cats and the life that they're accustomed to. I want to bring in creativity, right? Joy. So after you've cleared a space, what is it that you'd like to bring in? Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm right. I already taken notes. <laughs> oh, good for you. And the other thing that I learned from class is resin. So you can have resin such as pine, juniper, dragon's blood. And these are little things you put on a little tablet of charcoal and you light. And then again, you can go around, learn what the different resins mean and, and have fun with it. And one of the things I'd encourage people to do is do this whenever your space feels gross. Like if you have a big old party, you're definitely going to want to clear the energetic clutter after that. If you like when I first moved here, Chris and I are in the same town. I had didn't know people and I did meet up and I hosted an event. I was like, ooh, 
I got to clear my space. There were some people in here, mm -mm, not feeling your energy. So you want to make sure you do that. In addition to clearing your space, I'm going to encourage you to clear your own energetic clutter, your aura. Now, that might be a weird concept to some people, but especially if you're sensitive, and even if you aren't sensitive, like I talked about, you can just feel when someone's in your space. And if you have someone like a car salesman who's trying to get you to buy something, they're throwing energy at you. And what they're trying to do is connect into your energy and think about it like as a little hook, like, oh, she doesn't feel really confident in that area. I'm going to try to hook into her energy and pull her towards me. So you want to make sure that you are clearing that energy on a daily basis. You can do different things like shield yourself with white light, gold light, I personally, when I go out, I pull my aura and if I say it, it happens. Okay, aura, I want you to come in just 18 inches from me. I want my energy really close. And then I visualize surrounding myself with roses because roses are the universal universal symbol of love, right? So I just want love. And so if you throw some stuff at me, Chris, the rose is going to catch it and it's Mm. not going to get in my space and I'm not harming you. I'm not harming you because it's um, just have surrounded by love. But you want to put up shields, put up shields. It's just going to bounce right off. I mean, whatever speaks to you. But one thing I'd encourage people to do is, you know, like you take a shower, clean your energy daily. Like I did with the room, visualize all the draining off of all the energy. And then what I like to visualize is it just going to the center of the earth to be reused. It's going to renew. The earth is the Mm -hmm. great recycler. Exactly. So, and again, it's not about putting out harm for anyone else. It's just like getting everyone else's energy out of your space. And another thing you can do is like the resins that I talked about or the smoking. Like if you have a bundle of sage and burn that, you can do that to yourself. Clear your energy with that or the resin and get that out. Okay. You know what? I just want anyone's energy who's not in my space go. Go back to the earth, get recycled, send it back to them with love. And then if you do that daily, you'll feel a difference. And I encourage you, try it for a week or two and then see how you feel. That's the important thing, isn't it? Just to see how how you're feeling in that space. Yes. And, you know, like for you, example, you now I know you're doing telehealth, but I would be doing a clearing in between each client. If I was in an office, I'd be clearing the space in between each client. So that you are fresh again and that whatever is left over, because I'm sure you have some really intense, heavy conversations and stuff. Clear that, move that energy out and bring a whole new space for the next person. That makes sense. And I know you mentioned the shielding too. I like the image of the roses. So is it that people can bring in something to kind of surround themselves with like roses or other flowers or? You know what? I... Some other people who are quote unquote experts might disagree with me, but I have found in my life that intent is powerful. So if white roses are your thing, or if lilies are your thing, I'm going to say have at it because you connect with that. That has a symbol that has a meaning to you. And if it's easy for you to remember, if it makes you feel good, then use what makes you feel good. And you set the intent. Okay, I've got lilies all around me. I'm going to trust that the lilies protect me. Or if you want to bring your angels in, say, I'll do this for something. Oh, and the other thing I want to mention besides angels is grounding each day. And that's about... Yes, so important. So important and connecting yourself to the earth. And I know when I get stressed out, I always describe it as being on a bungee cord. If I'm stressed out, it's like I am out of my body. I am not grounded. I'm like, woo, 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 woo. And can't think, can't, I'm yep. just, I'm out there. So that's why grounding so important. And do you have any ways that you ground? Well, what I like to visualize is I visualize as a woman kind of a beginning in my first chakra, kind of the ovary areas, which would be, I guess, second chakra, but kind of visualizing from there and then anchoring. So I, people sometimes like to use a tail if they are close to animals or a tree. So or a big anchor or something. And then I visualize that going to the center of the earth. I also visualize roots coming out of my feet, That's going down one. to the center yeah. of the earth. Yeah. And then that way I am anchored to the center of the earth. I imagine I'm just hanging out in that molten core of the earth and that I am one with the earth and that that keeps me really centered and grounded. 
And, you know, YouTube, lots of just Google grounding, you will find a sure a ton of different things. And again, find what picks to you, you know, speaks to you. If you're someone and you are really musically inclined and there is something I'm not very musical that makes you feel completely grounded, completely in your body, play that. It's going to have the same effect. And it gets back to the, let, I'm going to set the intention that I'm going to ground today. And then obviously get in nature. If you can walk barefoot each day, that's really going to help you connect as well. Yeah, for sure. Because I teach grounding to clients as well. And and I think nice. too, just part of grounding can be just noticing where you are in your body. How mm-hmm. do my feet feel? What is under my feet? Are they warm or cool? Just noticing mm-hmm. the chair supporting you. And I, I also say too, imagine the earth holding you up, supporting you as another way to kind of ground of where you are in space and time. Yeah, absolutely. Again, and, and what I'd encourage people is make this fun. Don't make it like, oh, I go to ground. Well, let's have fun with it. How can we make it into a game, right? Try what Chris says. Try what I say. Go to YouTube and find something and see what resonates with you. Yeah, that's true. Because not, it's not, one thing isn't going to fit all, right? Exactly. And then, you know, the other thing I'd say, if you're listening, you're like, well, I do a little bit of this. We'll switch it up. Maybe your routine's gotten a little old and stale. And what can you do to freshen that up? Yeah, try something new. Do you wonder about your chakras? Does the energy around you feel stuck, stagnant, or negative? How well are you aware of your intuition and follow its guidance? Have you found yourself taking on other people's feelings, emotions, and more? Ready to clear energetic clutter and have your space, home, mind, and heart feel good? Got Clutter 365 Journal Prompt Energetic supports you in clearing your energy clutter. Free gift with purchase available at reawakenyourbrilliance.com, Amazon, Google Books, and more. Because what's going to happen if you don't ground and you don't clear space? What do you think the impact could be on healthcare professionals? Oh, that's a wonderful question. I think it affects you at every level, Chris, even if people can't articulate it, because I think it adds to your stress. It adds to, it's kind of like that thing. If you're seeing all these clients and you're talking heavy duty stuff, that's going to create tension. That's going to create thickness. That creates, I I think you have less clarity because you can't think as well when you're in a a space that's kind of junked up with energy. I think it definitely adds to your stress and it can add to your emotions. Have you ever just felt something and be like, wow, I'm feeling really sad right now, but I don't know why I didn't start out the day feeling sad and nothing's happened, but all that energy can be influencing you. And if you're an empath, you're definitely going to pick up on it, you know, at a much bigger way. Do you have that experience too, where some people's energy attaches more? I know you mentioned that a little bit. Yes, I have learned to be, well, first of all, I'd say trust your instincts for everyone. And, you know, I would say this is a healthcare practitioner. If you don't like the energy of someone, you don't have to have every client. You don't have to take on every client and you shouldn't feel guilt about that. You shouldn't feel that that's wrong. If your energy doesn't jive, then that's okay to say no. And so I know that there are certain type of people, how they act that I have to immediately, okay, got the roses up, might, you know, need to call in some angels as well. And so it's about paying attention to being aware and, oh, you know what? I'm just not feeling this person. There's just something that doesn't sit well with me. You don't need to analyze it. It doesn't matter what it is. To me, that's your intuition saying, you know, danger will Roger stop okay, you know what? I'm probably not going to take this person on as a client or it's probably someone I shouldn't date or it's probably someone I shouldn't do a a joint business venture with. Pay attention because that's your intuition signaling you. I think a lot of people don't listen to that. Mm -hmm. that, That's not really going to lead them the right way. But I found when I really am connected and grounded and really listen to my intuition, it's never steered me wrong. Absolutely. And the other thing, Chris, is it supports you in helping your clients because you're the more clear you are, the more you can pick up on cues and pay attention to what people are thinking. And, and, you know, as clear as you can get your client, then, you know, they're giving all those cues and intuitive hits, then signaling you 
how you can help support them even more. So that it's, you know, definitely helps you in business as well. Oh, for sure. Because I find too, that I, and I'm sure this is for all healthcare providers, that some people carry a lot of heavy energy. Mm-hmm. I find people that are more dep- severely depressed usually. And you got to be aware of yourself, your body, your energy. And I notice sometimes with some people, I'll be like, what is wrong with me? Like, I'm not really a depressed person. I have my moments, but not. And, and then I'm like, well, okay, what happened today? And I, I always got to say to myself, okay, is this mine or someone else's? Mm-hmm. And then I release whatever is not mine. I just, in my mind, I make that intention and say it firmly in my mind to, to release what's not mine. And I think about releasing it into the earth, like you said, through my feet, letting it go. And then I do, like 30 minutes later, I would say I start to feel better. And you can send back. And, you know, one thing that I took, okay, everyone's, uh, another thing I do, if I'm feeling like really heavy or off, I'll imagine like a big vacuum rose and it is just like the most powerful vacuum in the universe. And I'm like, okay, suck out whatever energy is not mine. And it's like, you know, and I I just literally feel this vacuuming and then I get it away from me and I blow it up into reusable energy. And then I'll also say, you know, sometimes you might've felt someone in your space and just like, oh man, I'm sitting here and they're a thousand miles away, but I'm there in my energy and I'm, I'm not liking this. You know what? I send back your energy with love. I'm going to return, return to sender. And, you know, you can, I like as much as humanly possible to send it back with love. I can't always do that, but I try to be like, okay, return to sender with love. If I can just do return to sender, then that's something. But to take that moment and to visualize the energy that's not mine and someone else says, thanks, returning to sender and then moving forward. That's so helpful to think of that return to sender. <laughs> yeah. Because right. you can't take on other people's energy. Everybody's, that's what I always tell people too. You can't take on, you got enough of your own. Absolutely. And I would think, especially for healthcare workers, more so than a lot of people, that would be a lot easier to do because you're in a role of being empathetic. You're being in a role of caregiving and to like, oh, I just want to heal and I want to make you better. And that you could easily slip into that. And I could, I was just thinking too, that could lead to, to burnout. As you're a thousand percent. Weighed down, I guess, mentally, spiritually, emotionally. And you can feel that energetic thing. And, you know, I mean, think about it. If you had a day full of clients when, man, I had a really great week. Here's what happened. Okay, then let's plan how we can take this even further. If that's the type of client you had for a day, you wouldn't feel heaviness. You'd feel probably really energized. But if you were continually, it's, you know, I think about people who are working with coronavirus patients for every shift. I can't even imagine I know. the heaviness that they're feeling right now. Right. Experiencing so much death and things out of their control. And that was another guest I had on here too, that talked about a lot of their burnout. Those working with COVID patients is they're used to healing, right? And having things they can use, medications, treatments. Mm-hmm. But what do you do with this, right? And you're not seeing those successes. You're not getting those boosts of, wow, I feel great. It's just like, a lot of loss, not right. getting the day reinforcement. In and day out. Oh, oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So they especially bringing out that rose vacuum after every shift and maybe on their 15 minute breaks or their lunch breaks or whatever. I mean, that's something like I would be heavy duty doing this. I'd be smoking myself. Uh, you know, I would be doing stuff all throughout the day and at the end of the day. Yeah, for sure. That's got to be like a big part of self-care. Mm-hmm. And I think too, yoga can play a part in this to get yourself back into your body. Because I have a lot of people that tell me how they're stuck in their heads and overthink, overthink. Mm. (laughs) Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely can. And I'm sure that you're the expert, but you would know poses that can help people ground and do that. That's another way. And you know, what I like about that suggestion is, as I talked earlier, okay, once you clear the energetic clutter, what is the intent that you want to bring in? So, you know, once you ground, like doing a yoga pose, either to help you ground, or maybe there's a yoga pose to open up your heart or something, or whatever you discover as you're clearing the energy. Oh, this is what I want to release. Well, what do I want to bring back in? And then follow that up with something. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. What do you want to release? And then what do you want to bring back in? Because I know tree pose, of course, is the ultimate grounding pose. (laughs) I cannot do that. I need to get back into yoga. I'm very like, 
Julie, we should be do the a most session. Uncoordinated. <laughs> well, we should do a session, but I'd probably be the most uncoordinated oh. student that you have ever, ever seen. It's okay. We have lots of accommodations. But tree pose is definitely one where rooting into the earth and, you know, using some of that visualization can be great and finding your balance, which could be, could be holding onto a chair or a wall if you need to. Right. So it's okay. Good meeting, to know. Meeting yourself where you are. Absolutely. And how is this going to work for me, you know, using that mindset? It is. And remember, your mind can't differentiate between what's real and what's not. So if you are picturing yourself grounding to the earth, that's what your body thinks is going on. True. And getting out, outside each day, too, I think is a really good idea. Unfortunately, though, Chris and I are here in the South, and I know we are <laughs> under heat. We have been under heat advisory practically all of last week, and it started again today. And I'm hoping, I keep telling myself, you know, May was pretty cold. June was pretty cold. July started off, you know, we haven't had any 100 days yet. Now, we've had hundreds because of humidity, but I'm like, okay, look at the bright side. This is where I'm challenged looking at the bright side. I'm like, okay, at least it hasn't technically <laughs> hit 100 yet on the thermometer. It has with humidity, but yeah, it's... I'm I'm chal- we go walking at like nine o'clock at night because it's just too hot right now. That's what I was gonna say because I, I do keep hearing people in my family, in friends, clients, everybody. Oh, I'm stuck inside. No, you're not. You can choose to work around it if it is too hot mm-hmm. out or too cold. You can go early in the morning or later at night. Because I went for a walk this morning at like seven a.m. It wasn't bad. It was totally fine. And it was doable. Yeah. But yeah, working around and I think changing that stuck mindset as well. Because I know a lot of people with with COVID too are not wanting to get out as much, but still connecting outside is important. Absolutely. I think more than ever, you know, my husband and I consider ourselves pretty much homebodies, but we're challenged now. And I can only imagine what it's like for extrovert. Yes. And I think at this point with how long this has been going on and we're recording in July now, but it's wearing on people, I think. I think so too. And so self-care, like giving yourself care if you're listening to Chris's podcast, because there's going to be something you can take away from each episode Absolutely. to give yourself. And now more than ever, you need it. And I'm sure they're on demand. So if you need to listen again, but even the action of listening to this podcast is self-care and then doing something once it's over, like saying, okay, there are a bunch of suggestions. What one thing can I do right now or today or tonight? Exactly. And it doesn't have to take a long time. Mm -hmm. Just closing your eyes and breathing. I think that's what you said in the last podcast, right? Yeah. I mean, that doesn't cost you a thing. It's something you can do. I don't care if you're stuck in an office, you can close your eyes for 30 seconds. Someone's not going to be on your shoulder every moment. And you can just take that moment to center and just get with one with your breath and take those deep breaths and just bring yourself back to the present moment. Absolutely. So, Julie, was there anything else you wanted to share about space clearing and energy? No, just remember that in every moment you have a choice. So to choose wisely. For sure. And who inspired you to be where you are today? Oh, my gosh. I don't know if we have enough time for (laughs) everyone that's inspired me. You know, today I've been thinking about her a lot. So I'm going to share my grandmother and hopefully I didn't share her last time. I don't think so. So I'm repeating myself. Uh, She was a really strong woman. And I just want to share this again, like it might get, we're talking because, you know what, I'm going to share it because we're talking about energy, energetic clutter, because I think it's important. So my grandmother was an amazing woman. She was the first attorney in my hometown. And we are, we just filed a lawsuit against our HOA a week ago, a week ago today. Oh, wow. So prior to, so I put all this stuff together and I, I felt my dad has looked at it, but then I did this whole long thing on acting in bad faith. And we we're sitting on the couch on a Friday night. And I heard, and I want to share this because this is, this is energetic because my grandmother's now in another form. She's not in a physical form anymore. And I heard, you need to go look at this. And I was like, okay. So I just did it. I've known when I hear something or have that intuitive feeling to act on it instead of being, oh, no, no, or having an argument or saying, I'm here, I'm crazy or whatever. So I sit down at the computer, go to the CCNR. And I'm like, okay, I'm, so I'm trying to think because it's like a 90 page document doing a word search. So I find I'm like, okay, this is what I need to know. But okay, I anyway, so then I hear keep reading. So on the, the same page, the next page, I see which is a huge thing. It, it basically says if there's a conflict, North Carolina law wins. 
And then it lists the order of importance. Well, our whole, they're, what they told us, they lied to us at the meeting or were willfully ignorant, however you want to decide, and said, we are above North Carolina law. Well, I found right here where it says if there's a conflict, North Carolina law wins, which is a large part of our case. Now, I, you cannot, will never convince me otherwise that it was my grandmother who was an attorney who directed me to that, to wow. find that. And she's been, <laughs> has been continuing to direct me to find stuff. So I would say to you as part of your self-care, your highest wisdom, you know what's best for you. And so when your wisdom is trying to get through, or if you view that wisdom as someone you were close to, like my grandmother, listen to it, honor it, and then take action. It's there to support you. How many times have you said, oh, no, no, that's not right. And you didn't follow that and it got you in trouble or you lost something or something, you missed an opportunity. Honor that. I think that's, to me, that's a huge part of self-care. Absolutely. Honor yourself, right? And honor your needs and and what comes Mm -hmm. up for you with intuition. Life lessons. Yes. So what's the best way for listeners to find you and learn more about you? They can go to my recently transferred and updated site. Oh, sweet. Reawaken. Yes, it's been, oh my gosh, it's been a process, <laughs> but I'm but I'm on a new host and, and got it updated looking a lot better. So it's reawakenyourbrilliance.com. You can find a link to the podcast, to my books, and to follow me on social media. And I offer a free 15-minute consultation if anyone's interested in exploring clearing clutter further. Absolutely. And I wondered too, do you have any resources of where people can find sustainably harvest? You mentioned the, the sage and the resin, because I, I don't think a lot of people would know even know where to start to find that. You know what? I will look for that. If you can send it to me, I will, I'll put it in the show notes so you guys can see that. I will go through my class materials to see. I don't know if she offered a place. Like I know, That's for okay. example... Well, but I will share this Rose Mountain Herbs, which I believe is out of Colorado is where I get a lot of my teas. But I would also say, look locally, like talk to your farmers. They're going to tell you information, but, uh, and then ask around. But Rose Mountain Herbs, I know does sell some resins as well. And there are certain things like, I think frankincense, frankincense is, is also endangered and so are threatened. And so they, if they have it, then it's going to be from, from a reliable source and it's going to be ethically harvested. So that's one resource I can offer and I'll see if I can find some more to send to you. So cool. That would be great. Well, thanks for coming back, Julie. This has been great. Thanks for having me, Chris. And thank you for all you're doing to share your gifts with the world and offering this podcast to support people. And thank everybody else for listening and tuning in again to Julie. And and again, she has offered so much for you guys. I hope you can listen to this twice because I feel like I have to listen (laughs) to get everything out of it more than once. And I hope you got a lot of helpful information on space clearing and energetic clutter. Again, this topic could be a whole course, couldn't it, Julie? It's really so Mm -hmm. much to learn from that. But if you like today's episode and want to support the podcast, remember to subscribe, rate, and review wherever you get your podcast. This helps us reach more people. And again, please share this episode with friends, family, colleagues, anyone you think could benefit. And remember to take care of yourself and stay safe. Take actions from today's podcast. Check out Chris McDonald's The Holistic Counseling Podcast. Have fun deciding how you want to clear energy. Clear your space. Make sure you get all the areas in your space when clearing and cleaning. Think about what you'd like to release when clearing energy. Fill your space with intentions. Cleanse your aura. Send back other people's energy with love. Set an intention daily. Protect your aura. Ground daily. Choose wisely in every moment. Next month, we're talking about hodgepodge. Go out, clear your clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. When you clear your clutter, you can share your gifts with the world. Sign up for our free newsletter at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. 
hope you've enjoyed Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out. Please rate, review, and share us.